Uh, Rhode Island is recognized. I thank the gentleman from Georgia for yielding the time. Hope I won't use all five minutes. Uh, I first want to say I, I support uh, the, the bill under debate right now and uh, certainly support criminal justice reform. Uh, and um, one of the best ways, of course, we can prevent people uh, from hopefully going down uh, the path of crimes is to make sure that they have good education. And so, hence, I'm here to speak on H.R. 439. And Mr. Speaker, as co-chair of the Bipartisan Career and Technical Education Caucus, I'm pleased to, uh, to rise uh, uh, with my good friend and, and fellow co-chair, Representative G.T. Thompson, uh, in support of H.R. 439, the National FFA uh, Organization's uh, uh, Federal Charter Amendments Act. I'd like to thank my friend from Pennsylvania for his partnership on this bill, who uh, would modernized the FFA Congressional Charter to better serve the organization's 669,000 student members across the country. Since 1928, the FFA, formerly uh, the, known as the Future Farmers of America, uh, has been an integral part of our nation's agricultural education system. Its mission is, is to prepare the next generation of farmers uh, who form the backbone of our nation's food supply system. Congress recognized the importance in 1950 when it granted the, uh, the organization a federal charter. But today, nearly 70 years later, that charter is overdue for an update. Of the, uh, the 100 nonprofit organizations uh, that have charters uh, with the federal government, uh, from the Girl Scouts of America to the National Academy of Sciences, uh, only six require government agencies to appoint members to the NGO's uh, board of directors. Uh, of those six, the FFA is the only federally chartered organization that requires a majority of its board members to be chosen by its partner agency, the Department of Education. So the bill that we're considering this afternoon, uh, that had been considered this afternoon and, and that passed, uh, brings the role of the Department of Education in line with other congressionally chartered organizations while maintaining the long relationship between the department and the FFA. In doing so, it gives the FFA more authority uh, and more autonomy uh, to deliver its integrated system of agricultural career and technical education, or CTE, to the 8,000 chapters located across all 50 states, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. H.R. 439 allows the FFA to be more independent, uh, but it uh, retains its ability to collaborate with the Department of Education and Agriculture. It also allows the FFA uh, to move its headquarters from Washington, D.C., uh, and provide online publications for its chapters around the country. The FFA uh, needs to adapt uh, to the 21st century economy, and modernizing its charter is a necessary step in that process. Today, the FFA helps train more than future farmers. It prepares the next generation of scientists, veterinarians, and business owners through classroom and, and work-based learning. As a strong advocate for CTE, I'm thrilled to support the skills-based education model on behalf of the FFA and its many teachers and students. Our bill aligns the FFA's charter with, the, uh, with this focus on CTE, specifically the Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resources uh, uh, career cluster, which gives students the opportunity explore exciting careers and to be prepared for future challenges. Our country faces daunting tasks in agricultural policy, from addressing food shortages to containing animal-borne diseases and, uh, and stopping the pollution of our waterways. So, Mr. Speaker, we can count on our nation's FFA students to not only grow our economy, but become the next uh, community of world leaders ready to tackle these 21st century cha challenges. In my home state of Rhode Island, I'm continually impressed by the hardworking, motivated, bright FFA students and the dedicated teachers who instruct them. Uh, through the FFA, these students are developing the academic and technical skills to succeed in agricultural fields and the leadership skills to make a real difference. This bill, the National FFA Organization's Federal Charter Amendments Act, uh, will allow the FFA to continue its mission uh, with more autonomy. So with that, uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank again my colleague uh, G.T. Thompson from the great state of Pennsylvania, uh, along with uh, uh, Chairman Nadler and Ranking Member Collins for their support, as well as my esteemed colleague, Senator Todd Young uh, of Indiana, for leading this uh, bipartisan effort in the Senate. Uh, again, I, I thank my colleagues for supporting this bill, and I yield back the balance of my time. Uh, again, thank the gentleman from Georgia for from yielding. Uh, the gentleman from Rhode Island yields the balance.